Today, we're going to talk about monads again. But this time, we're going to talk about monads inside an arbitrary two category. Now, usually, a monad is a functor together with a couple of natural transformations. And what that means is that we've done something inside the two category of categories, functors, and natural transformations. But of course, we can try and do that inside any old other two category. And we get the definition of a monad inside another two category. So given let, uh, let C be a two category, that's a strict two category. So you can secretly think of this as being like the two category cat, e.g. Cat, then a monad inside C, a monad in C is given by, this should all look very familiar, it's a zero cell, an underlying zero cell X, a one cell T from X to X, and a pair of two cells, two cells uh, eta from 1 to t, and mu from t squared to t. You know, I feel like I've said this a lot recently, but maybe it wasn't to you. Anyway, uh, so these, these have to satisfy the usual monad axioms. Satisfying the usual monad axioms. Now, in fact, we don't just get monads in a two category, we get an entire two category of monads inside any two category. And this is what happens in Street's paper, The Formal Theory of Monads. So what we have to do now is we have to think up a notion of morphism of monads. So what's a morphism of monads? A monad functor Well, we've got to take a pair of monads. So we've got, here's one monad, S. Well, it's S1 on X1. And here's another monad, S2 on X2. So a monad functor from this sort of thing to that kind of thing is going to be given by... Well, you can sort of guess what it should be at the first place because certainly we've got to have some way of getting from X1 to X2 in the first place. So it's given by a one-cell... Um, u from x1 to x2 and a two cell that somehow tells us about the interaction between these two things. So what it's going to be is something called, let's say, lambda from s to u to u s1. So we could try drawing this as a, as a, as a square. So it's going to go from, so here's, here's a u and here's U again. And here is uh, uh, S2. And here is S1. And our lambda has to go in here. Now you might, you might think that this is somehow going backwards. Because this is something going from the 1s to the 2s. And this 2 cell here is going from the 2s to the 1s. But the point is, the point that's really going on here is that we, we want, if you think about these as ordinary monads on categories, so this is a category with a monad on it, and this is a category with another monad on it. And you can then think about the algebras for this monad and the algebras for, for this monad. And the thing we're aiming for is to be able to get a functor from these algebras to those algebras. And it turns out that to do that, you need this thing going in this direction. Um, otherwise, everything's going to go backwards. Uh, right, so now we need the notion of a transformation between these things. So if you think, look, about, look at this carefully. Oh, I forgot, I forgot about axioms, satisfying some axioms. And, well, you see, I could, I could be all category theorist about this and say it's satisfying the obvious axioms, but actually the axioms are sort of interesting, so I think I might even tell you what they are as a special treat, because it's nearly Christmas. Uh, right, so what's the axioms? Yeah. Well, what do you think the axioms? What do you think the axioms should be? Well, look, we've got this thing here that's got some monad structure and some other monad structure. So the axioms are going to tell us that this thing jolly well ought to interact properly with the monad structure. That is the eta for this thing and the eta for this thing. So, and the mu for this thing and the mu for that thing as well. So let's do the etas first. So here are the axioms. Well, we've got S2 U going to U S1. And then there are two ways that we could, that we could go down there from U. We could either do the eta for S2, 
with u on the right, or we could do the eta for S1 with u on the left. And that thing has to commute. And if I weren't so damn lazy, oops, I could draw these as double arrows because they're really they're really commuting diagrams of two cells. And the other the other axiom is that we've got to interact properly with all the mu's everywhere. So if we have um, the point is to think about this as S2 sort of moving over the U and turning into an S1 as it does so and sort of leaps onto the other side of the U. So if we started with a couple of S2s, we could leap them over the U one by one. So the first time, we'd leave one of them on the left, leap one of them over the U and turn it into a 1. And then we've got this other one which we can leap over, so then we've got two of the S1s on the right. Um, so this, this here is a S2 and then a lambda. I don't know if that's legible. And this is a lambda and then an S1. The other thing we could have done was we could have started by doing mu down here, mu of the S2, and landing on an S2u. And over here, we could have done u and then a mu of an S1, and landed on u S1. And then we could have just let the S2 over the u all at once, like that. So those are the two things uh, that have to commute to be a monad functor. Finally, we can look at what it is to be a monad transformation. And you should be able to work out what this is as well, because what's the underlying data for this? We've got a two cell, no we haven't, we've got a one cell, and a two cell. And so the data for a transformation should jolly well be a two cell between different ones of these, and some axiom telling us about the interaction with the two cell. So that's exactly what it is. Uh, 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 maybe I'll take these axioms off. Um, a monad transformation. So let's just work out where we're going from and to. We're going to have here's x1, s1, which is a monad. Here's x2, s2, that's a monad on x2. Here's one monad transformation, and I'm going to call this um, u lambda. So that's u1, lambda1, and here's another one, which is u2, lambda2, and we're going to look for a monad transformation between them like that. So this is given by a two cell between the one cells. So it's a two cell from, so let's just make sure this type checks. I mean, we've got, fundamentally we've got a u1 like this, and we've got a u2 like this, so we're going to look for a two cell sigma living in there, and it's got to satisfy the obvious axiom. Satisfying, well, let's hope this axiom is really obvious. So you could do sigma on here, right, uh, maybe I need more space. No, maybe I don't. I probably do, actually. Never mind. So you could do u1 going to u2 sigma here, um, uh, and then the lambda 2 for it. So we're going to have, coming down here, we've got S2 and S1, and we've got our lambda 2, and that's got to be the same as doing it the other way around. So we've got our lambda 1, which lives in here. Ah, oh, that's a 2. And this is an S1, that's an S2. Who's this? That's a U1. This is a U1. Here's our lambda 1. Here's our sigma. And that has to commute. So what we get is an entire two category of monads in C. This gives us, this gives a two category of monads inside C. Uh, and you can go home and check that it really is a two-category.